In this lecture, we're going to look at the substitution rule. This is a technique for computing antiderivatives where the integrand looks like it came from the derivative of a composition through the use of a chain rule. So in some sense, this is really, so aka, this is really about undoing the chain rule. Remember, the chain rule was a differentiation technique for computing the derivative of a composition of functions. So this is the chain rule. It says if you're staring at a composition of functions and you want to compute its derivative, you do the derivative of the outside function, evaluate it at the inside, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. In terms of differentials, which is going to be more convenient for us to express this in, so in terms of differentials, if y was this composition, f, f of g of x, so that's our function y, then dy, the differential, is the derivative of the function. And that's just this, again, by the chain rule times the differential dx. So that's just the chain rule expressed in terms of differentials. This is going to be convenient for us because it says that suppose you're staring at an integral and the integrand looks like this. It looks like f prime g of x g prime of x dx. What can you immediately say? You can immediately say that this looks like it came about as the derivative of a composition of functions, of a function f and a function g. So if I can spot in my integrand a piece, a function, a maybe a complicated piece, g, where its derivative, g prime, also appears, then I know that g, I know that inside function. All that's left to find the antiderivative is to work on the outside function. What is the antiderivative of f? So I can sort of split off these two pieces. I can work on the g function and I can work on the S f function and construct those, put them back together, and get my antiderivative. That's what the substitution rule is going to help us do. It's going to say if you can identify that g function first, substitute for it, get rid of it, and now focus on that outer function f. See if you can find its antiderivative. So let's go to work on this example. If we use a hint, it says what if we think about dx above as a differential and look at this function u equals e to the negative x squared. So what do we do with this? Well, let's try differentiating it. Look at the differential. It's e to the negative x squared, derivative of the inside function times dx. Or in other words, negative 2x e to the negative x squared dx. And that's precisely what appears here. So what that means is that the antiderivative of this integrand is precisely what we wrote down above, e to the negative x squared, and then we can add an arbitrary constant here. Okay, it looked like a little bit of magic went on here. It looked like this hint actually said, consider this thing, and then just check. Take its derivative, and we check, and yeah, that's the integrand, so we found the antiderivative. So how would one come up with this in the first place? So here's how one would do this sort of thing in practice. What you would do is you'd stare at the integrand. And you'd say, is there anything I could replace in the integrand so that its derivative also appears there? So let's check. We're going to substitute for something in the integrand whose derivative also appears there. Well, I notice that if I take that piece of the integrand, take its derivative, it also appears in the integrand. In fact, it's the whole integrand. So when I do this, I make this substitution, now I'm thinking again back here. I'm trying to substitute for some g where the g prime appears and then get them out of there so I can focus just on that outer function f. So I do that here. I take the integrand and I try to get 
everything in terms of u now. And I notice that everything is actually just du. The whole expression, the whole integrand, including the dx, can be replaced with du. And now I've reduced the integral to a much simpler integral. I've reduced the original integral to now just focusing on antiderivative of this outside function f. And the outside function in this case just happens to have a derivative of 1. So the outside function would then be the antiderivative of 1, which is u. So that's the outside function. And now I can put everything back, the inside function, back in, and I get an e to the negative x squared plus c. And so there's our answer. Okay, so that's not the only way to do this one. Maybe I should say that was method one. The key difference between method one and maybe method two, and there's probably other one, ways to do this, is the substitution. So let's just look again. And I hope this is going to help illustrate what's going on with this idea that we're developing of the substitution rule, where the flexibility comes in. So what I want to do is substitute for something where its derivative also appears. So originally I substitute for e to the negative x squared, and it seemed to work out quite well. What if I substitute for something else? Again, I'm just trying to look for a function g where its derivative also appears so I can get rid of it. Well, maybe, well, I notice that there's a negative x squared, and the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x, so maybe I'll just substitute for the negative x squared. And then when I take the derivative of it, I get that. And the thing to note here is that this is precisely those two pieces in the integrand. And so now I can take my integral and express it all in terms of u. This is like trying to find that outside function f. I'm going to take everything involving u and replace the expressions involving x with the ones involving u. So negative 2x dx, that becomes a du. The e to the negative x squared now becomes an e to the u. So in this case, I've identified the outside function. It's the function f whose derivative is eu. So now I anti-differentiate that. I get e to the u plus c. That allowed me to focus on the function whose derivative was e to the u. I got that function, it's e to the u, that's my function f. Now I found the antiderivative of f, I can plug all the stuff involving g back in. g, which I relabeled in terms of the variable u, is that, so this becomes e to the negative x squared plus c. Plug everything involving u back into the expression, and we get it. Notice it's the same result. In all three cases, we get the exact same result. Our methods just sort of varied between them. So that's the idea of the substitution rule. Look for something in the integrand whose derivative also appears, substitute for it, get rid of it, focus on the outside function, compute its antiderivative, plug everything back in. So here's the formal statement of it. The substitution rule says if you're staring at an integral that looks like this, you've got little f of g of x and a g prime of x appearing, so both a function and its derivative appear, then substitute for it. Use a new variable, replace that function with that new variable, re-express your integral in terms of the new variable that focus your attention on the outside function. Now go to work on anti-differentiating that. Let's now go ahead and look at a bunch of examples so we can get lots of practice on this.